Hi, Mark. I just want to take the th chance to thank you for asking about the international outreach team this year. I've, I've got some statistics I'd like to share with you and kind of bring you up to date as to where we are after uh, actually being in uh, active, active with this international growth for the last six years or such. Uh, today we ended up this year in 2016 with 43 international uh, contests outside the United States. Uh, in total now we have about 1,372 judges that's been trained and so they're ready to go to judge contests just like we do here in the states as such. Uh, if my numbers are correct, um, 2017 even looks better. I think we'll finish the year up with about 57 or 58 brand uh, contests as such. Uh, some of our new countries will be Costa Rica. We're talking to Panama right now. Uh, I'm here at the Jack this weekend. We'll be entertaining Brazil, Argentina, and Estonia. So those are some of the new growth uh, uh, countries that we'll be um, hoping to have a sanctioned contest in the near future. And it, it all started right here in the Jack. Uh, we've been involved with international teams for the past 11 years. And about six years ago, we kept talking to the international teams, and they kept saying, "Would you come to the state, or come to our country, and teach us how to cook as you do here in the states?" And that's really what kicked it all off. And um, our goals, as far as the international outreach team, was to have 10 contests in five years. Uh, fortunately, this is our sixth year. We're going to exceed 50 contests, so it's been tremendous growth for us. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, they're serious cookers overseas. They they're just as well intent as they are here in the in the states to compete on the level that we compete at. Uh, the only difference between the level of cooking is our flavor profiles that they're not used to. So uh, we're trying to solve that problem for them and we're having a, a great time. They treat us uh, extremely uh, well when we go over there and I'd like to encourage any team or, and our judges to take part in our international activities. I think they'll be pleasantly surprised how similar it is to judging or, or competing here in the state. Oh, oh yes, you can go on our website and when you go on the landing page on the KCBS website up, up in the left hand corner hit the international link and it'll take you right to each of our contests and are listed just as they are for the state contest here by month as such or by location as such uh, we're in 17 countries now overseas in the european area so uh, that comprises of about 28 or 29 contests right now. We expect that we'll see uh, 32 or 33 contests for next year. Uh, our new countries in Europe will be Estonia and uh, Spain. For the first time, we're in France with possibly two contests. And uh, so that's been our growth area in that other uh, area. And other than that, the, most of the other European countries we've been involved with. Hello, my name is Greg Shiner. I'm a Brown Foreman employee up from Houston, Texas. Uh, technically, I'm the commercial manager for all of South Texas, covering Houston, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, the Rio Grande Valley, San Antonio, and Austin. But I'm here because I'm also the head of the Jack Daniels Barrel House Cookers. My team, Barrel House Cookers, um, is not a sanctioned KCBS team um, or or we don't compete in, in KCBS events. We did here at the Jack about five years ago. Um, we're a local team in Houston. Uh, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Barbecue event is a fundraiser with a barbecue contest attached to it. Uh, we'll attract well over a quarter million people to the event. We'll put some 8,000 people through our Jack Daniels tent. Uh, we've been finalists four times. We took first and second in chicken about six years ago and four years ago took a third place brisket. So uh, good there. We also compete under a different name, Best in the West Cookers, uh, down in Galveston County, Texas. Uh, Galveston County uh, Barbecue Contest is the second biggest in Metro Houston and we've taken several first place and grand champions there. We compete in other uh, contests, small contests throughout uh, the upper Gulf Coast and then we head out every fall into uh, to the hill country of Texas out into Concan and uh, just left there with three uh, three first place ribbons uh, about two weeks ago. Um, unlike here in the south, no whole hog, it's, uh, it's all chicken, ribs, brisket, uh, Texas not being uh, KCBS, uh, there's fajitas, there's chicken wings, uh, depending on the contest that we go to, and, and we've been blessed that we've actually taken firsts in all those categories as well. So 
Um, working our way, just recently worked with a uh, Wagyu uh, brisket ranch, or Wagyu ranch, uh, A Bar N ranch out of Sherman, Texas. Uh, trying to find a good Texas source for beef for competition and uh, we're looking forward to uh, March where hopefully we'll come in with the first place brisket with our new partners at A-Bar and Ranch. Um, and I'm involved in the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off. And that's relevant because whoever wins in Houston, the grand champion then is invited here to what we call the Jack or the Jack Daniels World Invitational Barbecue. And once you leave Lynchburg and you're the grand champion, you've competed against the best in America and the best in the world. So because of that reciprocity agreement, I come up from Houston, Texas uh, as an event facilitator uh, and as an employee of the company to help put on this great event. I've been blessed in the last couple of years that members of my barbecue team in Houston come to help here as well. Um, we have a little tradition in Houston where we uh, take bandanas, something that's a, a big thing in Texas, and we, uh, we interact with consumers uh, in that way, tying them on um, and giving them a personal Jack Daniels experience. So it's my pleasure to be here in Lynchburg, Tennessee, as I'd call it God's country, uh, and we're just praying that we're going to have us a great event, a safe event, uh, and looking forward to the next grand champion. Thank you. It looks horrible. You got to base her a little bit. Yeah. That's why I said dry. This looks horrible. Of course, it has been holding it for five hours. She's been done that long? What's she dress at? About 160. It's a good size hog. Are you going to go over here to grab or? No, it's going to be anybody's way. What do you need? Be out of the way? Well, I'm going to have to come towards you. Come on, Dick. Get in line. Okay. Oh, man. Hey, man. What'd y'all do? How'd y'all get first in line? Well, you didn't hear Philip Granger crying over there. Follow Wayne. Get in line. Get in line. Wayne's an eater. I did. On oh, one of those big gym eaters? Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to get that on the <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Oh! That's a lie. I've got a precise. Tater salad. Tater salad. Coleslaw. Is that a beef rib? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I hope so. I don't want to see a hog that big. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Don't get her out. If you have So, they probably put me in charge of something. Tell everybody how to do this. Stop. Stop. Come here. Beans? Beans? Not bogey. Oh, that's great, man. I've been joking. I've been finding somebody to do everything all day. And the moment they said, okay, get everybody line up, I said, I love you. I said, wait a minute, we got Philip here. All runs, runs well. Hey, the right man at the right time, right place. You want to try that? That's cool. Man. Got some beef ribs too. I'm going to need a paper towel. The main course in I Know Jack about grilling for 2016 is bacon wrapped dates. Bacon wrapped dates. What we have put in the box for each contestant team ground beef, five ounce patties, and they get two pounds of that. Both red and green tomatoes, pickles, one small container of mustard, ketchup, and mayonnaise each, some mushrooms. We also have some onions, a little shredded cheese, salt and pepper, jalapenos, just under a pound of bacon, thickly cut, some eggs, Texas toast, and of course the dates and the bacon. Pepper jack cheese, balsamic vinegar, 
bell peppers, yellow squash, little potatoes, and here's where it gets interesting. Whole pineapple, brown sugar, cinnamon, cayenne pepper, and yes, a bottle of Jack Daniel Old Number 7. The rules for I Know Jack About Grilling are not that extensive. There aren't that many of them, but they are firmly and strictly enforced. All cooking, of course, has to be done during the allotted time on the equipment that we provide. You get a gas grill and a Primo charcoal grill. The allotted cooking time is one hour and only two team members, one of which has to be the chief cook, are allowed to do the cooking. Each team is allowed one runner to get one additional spice or another small item. Each team must cook and present one entree, one side dish, one dessert, and one appetizer. Now, for the appetizer, the recipe is included. It's a matter of interpretation from the teams. Plating and garnish is strictly up to the option of each individual team. The team members must cook and present an entree, a side dish, and one dessert to a panel of five judges who do have discriminating palates. Every chief cook must make an oral presentation to the judges panel lasting no more than two minutes. And each team has provided five plates for the appetizer, five for the presentation plates, and for the side dishes. Every team brings their own individual utensils to make their dish the best that it can be. What are your thoughts so far? We're going to do a, uh, a stuffed bacon wrap meatloaf with a uh, potato hash and a I think just garlic bread and make a bread pudding. Bread pudding? Garlic bread? Yeah. Bread pudding. on the pineapple. We're just going to season it, grill it, and hopefully get some whipped cream to dress it. How fast can you shake that cream? <laughs> I got a whisk. It's getting warm though. That's the next problem. I did one years ago with Byron. One of these? Not rub? Yeah in Bellevue. It was 110 degrees. Of course, that cream is getting warm. We did whipped cream for the peaches. He was standing out there with his whisk and stainless steel bowl and kind of walking around. And next thing I knew, boom, he had whipped cream. I don't know how he did it, but... He's a chef. Yep. Do not talk to the judges. Judges, you 
not talk to the gallery. Do not give the gallery any of your food. There'll be a leftover table. Help yourself there. Okay? Wow, Bill. Thank you, sir. We're going to do a pair of the product. That's 20% of the score. Tenderness, 20. Taste, 40. The Jack Factor, or originality, 20. Now, don't worry about picking up the score. Just give us your uh, points. And you have a high score of 50 and a low score of 25. But just write in what you feel. And we'll do the, the math and the percentage when we calculate, okay? And we'll have five of these. You'll five. have five, right. This is only our first. <laughs> That's your first. Yes, sir. Team one. So the highest score is 50. So if every one of these is you think that was going to be the rate right of 50. Yes, ma'am. And then the lowest is 55. Yes, ma'am. And then score in between. It, anywhere in between, if you feel that you should do. And it's not, uh, of course, you haven't seen the next one. Don't worry about what's coming up. Just do that. Check that thread over there in the grill. Flip it up, see if it's brown on the bottom yet. Yeah. Of Zola, and then on top uh, the egg. On the side, you have uh, um, 
peperonata, it's a typical Italian plate with uh, pepperoni and tomato sauce normally and onion which has been uh, caramelized a little bit uh, with some sugar also and uh, then you have the entre which I don't remember the name it's the dattero the date uh, wrapped with inside the cheese <laughs> and, and some balsamic vinegar and then you have the let's say uh, dessert which is ananas caramelized caramelized pineapple caramelized, uh, it's pineapple, caramelized uh, with uh, Sugar and some uh, Jack Daniels and then some uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon, uh, correct. Uh, yeah. the green uh, tomatoes ah. there. And in the hamburger, there is also the green uh, tomato, which has been grilled. Ah, and it has been uh, marinated with balsamic uh, vinegar. Okay. So. Welcome to Barbecue Hill. My name is Sue Chandler and I'm with Jack Daniel Food Service, All American Catering. We will be serving the guests tonight up on Barbecue Hill for the big festivity of 150th celebration, the Jack Daniel Invitational Barbecue. Tonight we're going to be serving southern fried chicken, green beans, mashed potatoes, the Jack Daniel Lynchburg special apples. We all know what makes these apples so special yeast rolls, and of course, the beautiful and wonderful tasting Jack Daniel double chocolate brownies. Sweet tea and unsweet tea, I hope you'll come and eat with us. All right, my friends here are prepping the lamb chops, getting them all ready to go on the grill for later. They're, uh, we prep them, give them a quick uh, bath, um, sprinkle them with lemon juice, what's and then the, uh, oregano. What's in the bath? Vinegar. Just vinegar and lemon yep. juice? Yep, that's it. Very simple, straightforward. Okay, what's just oregano and that's it? Oregano, that's it. And then uh, it's the Primo Grill that makes them taste the best? The Primo Grill gives them that wood smoke. Ah. Alright, that's all I need. That's the smoke or just plain? No, this is cured, smoked, and then grilled. So it starts off as raw pork belly. Well, you've already cured it? I've already cured it and smoked it. And now I'm going to grill salt, it. Is this a salt sugar cure? Or which? Um, it's a, it's a uh, barbecue type cure. Just a um, 12 day cure, and then you smoke it for about five or six hours. Cover it with brown sugar, butter, and honey. And then let it settle until it's fork tender. And then, yeah. All right, so what we're doing is we're cooking a pork belly. We're going to grill some pork belly slices. We're going to then put them on a crustini bread that's toasted with olive oil, brushed with bacon fat. We're going to add a fig balsamic glaze. When we're out of the balsamic fig glaze, we're going to add a grilled balsamic peach glaze. And when all that's done, we're just going to continue to have Jack Daniels.
next week. That's it, Marty Davis. Marty! These two here are absolute barbecue royalty. Anybody ever heard of Chef Paul Kirk? Yeah. Marty and Paul have written a couple of cookbooks together, and I, there's another one in the works, right? There is another cookbook in the works. So, Jeff, tell us how this works. We've got grievances from the years past, or from the past year, and Jesper the pig. All right, I'm not sure everybody had a chance to do this, but you can do it in your minds anyway. If there's been something you've done this year that you've regretted, if you held a grudge against somebody,